Hi folks, this is Dr. D. I apologize for being late on this uh, walkthrough. Uh, the flu kind of hit me a little bit harder than I thought it would, and I've relapsed a bit here. So bear with me. We'll get through this remix, and if necessary, you can take an additional day to turn in your work. Um, this is the Lab 5 remix, and this is the uh, remix student name .rmd file, and this is the one that I've worked through that's got a solution on it. That's why I've got dash solution. Uh, I always like to keep uh, the original copy uh, pristine, so I don't have to worry about that, and I just, you know, make a copy of it and name it the way I want. Okay, one of the things I wanted to point out to you uh, that may help some of you is the newer versions of RStudio and Posit Cloud, which is our studio in the cloud now have this visual tab and it may help you see what's going on when you're in the source you get the raw code over here um, and for example there's an image all this can be distracting to some people but if you click on the visual tab you get a message like this saying you're activating the R markdown visual editing mode yada 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 but anyway it just uh, allows you that you can t take this check mark off if you don't or leave it on if you don't want to show the message again i'm going to take it off because i'm making more videos and just click on use visual mode and then the, the top part doesn't look like it's changed but it has as you scroll down you can see that it's taken all the markdown coding and highlighting and makes it look more like the web page and uh, more how it will look on your uh, final report when you knit it to either Word or uh, PDF. Um, you can still see the code chunks and you can still paste in them the same way uh, that you could on the, uh, the source view. And sometimes when I'm editing a lot of code, I will go back to source view. For some reason, it just seems more familiar to me. But for many of you, using the visual uh, will make it easier to read and to see what is going on. One other thing that I would uh, point out to you that I always do to make sure, remember we're trying to make these things into a reproducible document. That means everything someone else would need in order to reproduce what you've done has to be in this RMD document. Uh, Objects that are over here in the environment that you created in prior sessions, if they're not, if the code that sets these things up is not in this document, then whoever you want to reproduce your work cannot reproduce your work. So what I like to do to make sure that, that I haven't forgotten that, I go up here to the broom, clean sweep, and you remove all objects from this environment. This is just from this one work uh, space in this warm work session. So I'm gonna click yes, and that cleans out my environment. So now I know when I create something, it'll pop up over here, and I know it will not hinder me when I'm uh, knitting to make the final document. This first code chunk uh, works when we're uh, knitting. You don't need to worry about it right now. The first we need to run is this one, loads the tidyverse, uh, which we use a lot, and now it's loading the infer package, which has the thing, the, the code chunks, the functions that I'm trying to say that we need for this assignment. And pretty doc is just something that, that uh, will help make your final uh, knitted document look a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and click on run, run those. And I can see down here in my console, I got my ready prompt back. And of course the RAM isn't, running anymore so I know that uh, those ran successfully. So let's scroll on down here. You can read these. Uh, oops. You scroll. Get rid of that. There we go. It highlights when you double click like that. Uh, first thing we need to do is set this seed and you can uh, read that link we've got up there that will explain you know why you set that and why you set a number we're setting 76 as receipt all this does it makes it possible for us to reproduce when we run one of the random functions 
we give it a flag to tell it where to start so that every time it runs, it, it knows where to start so that we'll get the same answers. If you don't set a seed, then you'll get a different answer every time you run the code. Here we're going to read in the SAT GPA. This is our main data file. And I'm just going to click Run. And you can see we get some messages here. And over there we've got the SAT GPA showing up in our environment. One thing you can do, this is a, a message. It doesn't say error anywhere. It doesn't say warning anywhere. It, it's just a message. Um, and I will show you real briefly how to suppress those messages inside your R code symbol up there. Put a comma and then space and start typing message. And it will offer up message equal. We want false. And then I'm going to start warning. Warning equal false. Now when I run, let me save this. Now when I run this chunk, it won't display the messages and warning. It'll still display errors, which you must you know, leave that. You don't want to suppress the errors, but it gets rid of this red stuff, so it should anyway. There you go. So now we've loaded it again, and we don't have the red message. That's something you can use on any of your uh, remixes and rises. Uh, I'm sorry, your rehearses and remixes. Uh, put that little code in there, and it'll suppress the warnings and make it for a cleaner final document. First thing it says we got to do is inspect the data. So we've got this data object, sat underscore GPA over here. It says it's a thousand observations. That's a thousand rows of seven variables. So you can get a glimpse at it here by just clicking the down arrow, and it will give you each of the variables here. And it says where it's a number. This first one is just the number of the row. And then the first real variable is sex. It's a character or a qualitative char categorical made up of male and female. Note how they spell and how they capitalize or otherwise hyphenate these names because you got to reproduce these names exactly. SAT verbal is the next uh, variable and it's quantitative and it's numbers. And that's these are the two we're going to be using in this remix, okay? And then what I would do would be to go back over here. Excuse me. What I like to do in order to, to see a little more clearly, I'm going to click or double click on the name and it will open up this data object, if it's an object, in your um, editor and source editor, and it looks more like an Excel spreadsheet. So you can see we've got the columns, these are the rows, uh, and there's our two variables of interest this time, sex and sex underscore verbal. The example code that, that you're given uses the um, SAT total, I think, and GPA. But as you go through and edit the code chunks, you'll be using these two uh, uh, variable names. So let's scroll on down here. Whoops, let me get back into the remix. That'd help, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, so that's what I mean by um, inspect the data, identify the variables of interest, um, and then, you know, what are the, how the data is presented. You can use this glimpse function. That'll give you a sneak peek at it. Again, I, I prefer opening it up in the, the, uh, source editor window so it looks like an Excel file, an ordinary table, which most people are familiar with it to, to understand. Here's our first question, and I'm, I'm going to change this when I edit this document. Is there a difference in male and female SAT verbal scores? Okay, so you know, it's looking at the sex, that is the simple dichotomy, which I know uh, we have more flavors today than we, we used to. But we're using just two, male and female. These are self-reported. And that's in the sex variable. And then we're going to use this SAT verbal score. So those are our two variables. And we're going to sort them by male and female. First thing it says, calculate the SAT verbal score for each gender using the group by and summarize commands from the Dippler package. Dippler is in tidyverse. It's one of the sub-packages in there. Um, 
and it says you need to get code 5, but uh, we've given you that. And I put a note there, and I moved it from yours. This, this hint was in the wrong place. It says you will need to create a new data object. One of the things that I see students get confused is we're giving them the example, and that's, I've got it in green here, preceded by a pound sign. And you can see there the first step in the, the uh, old code was create average underscore GPA and sex. That's comparing average GPA by sex from the SAT uh, GPA, our main data source. We want to change that uh, so that we know we've got a different variable. And again, since we cleaned out the environment, uh, it'll make it a little bit less complicated, but this way I know uh, the new variable, you know, what I've named the new variable. And it's just saying uh, we want to create average verbal sex using SAT underscore GPA, and this is the pipe operator, and then group by sex, and then summarize by here, we used to have GPA FY equal mean GPA, and now we want to change it to summarize. Uh, we're creating another column there, so to speak, SAT verbal, that's the name we're giving it. And uh, we want uh, the mean of SAT verbal. I'm sorry, this is our existing column, but that's the SAT verbal uh, variable and we want the mean of that and then we want to just print it out so I can run this code there and you can see this is helpful um, I know I'm getting long-winded here but by uh, keeping the old code and putting the dollar sign in front of it that turns will changes the color but it tells R to ignore that but by looking at the original and then looking at what I uh, use that can help me when I, I go back and if I want to reuse this code or if I've got some error, error checking to do. So I recommend that, you know, keeping the old code, just put a power, uh, pound sign in front of it, and then just copy and paste below and then edit it appropriately. You can see here again, we've changed the two variables, SAT verbal there, uh, the old was GPI at fiscal year. So there's our first. So this is the way I recommend you go through it. Um, we're just going to do a simple subtraction here, taking these two values, 48.60 and 49.264, subtracting them. Now I know I uh, subtracted the male from the female. You can do it either way. Uh, just be consistent throughout. Once you start with the uh, female being you know, on the left side and the male on the right side, uh, you got to continue that. And granted, this gives a negative, but it's just my, my practice. I uh, keep them alphabetical, F, M. And then we have these questions we're going to answer. What is the difference sample mean verbal scores? And that's what we just calculated there, the, the minus 0.644 with the male being higher than the female. And that's what I wrote there. And then here we're making a guess. Is this different statistically significant? Now we haven't done the calculations yet, so I don't really know. But just by looking at this, you can see that it's 0.64, and we're that's uh, 50. So that's that's um, you know if it, if it were one out of a hundred, that'd be you know uh, one over 100. This is 0.4 over that over 49. So it's about less than 1%. So is that really a big enough difference that we'd call it statistically significant? My guess would be no, okay? And here I added some code. You don't have to do this just to divide those, uh, simple math, and that gives you the uh, about a 1% there. You can add that in if you want. Next is to generate a visualization of the verbal scores. Be sure to include a title, label your accent, now here again, I've, I've got the given code chunk and the parts I'm editing, I put the pound sign in front and it turns green, I hope you can see that. When we're doing ggplot, remember, it uses the plus sign instead of the pipe operator. And we can chain these things together. You'll see in some of the assignments, we'll go from 
tidyverse with the pipe operator in the ggplot um, and then we use the uh, plus operators and if you go back into tidyverse you would just at the very end here and that's what's telling R to stop there's no nothing after this point uh, that's why it stops processing but if I put a pipe operator there I can go back and do some more if I wanted to so that's how that works and again I've just changed out. Uh, we're using the same main data base, so that's why SAT GPA is the same. We're still using sex as one of our variables, but here we're now we're using the SAT verbal for the Y variable instead of GPA FY. And then I've edited the title a bit to change it from grade point averages to SAT verbal scores. And then down here again, I've edited this line to go from the Y equal GPA verbal score, that's the label for the Y axis, to SAT verbal score. And again, we can just run that. Did I run it? There we go. And it gives us two box plots. And here you can see these dark lines are the medians, and they're pretty close together. There's a little bit of difference there of the, of the male, that's the male on this side. And I forgot to label that, but um, you can go back and do that if you want. Uh, and this is the female over here, a little bit lower. But again, that's why I don't think it's statistically significantly different. There is a difference, but there's a difference between a difference and statistically significant difference. So I have to learn that. And then we state our null and alternatives. And null is usually a form of no difference, so I just say there's no difference between female and male verbal SAT. The alternative is the reverse or the opposite, which is there is a difference. So we're testing this null, and we're starting with the assumption that there's no difference, that if you subtracted female from male or vice versa, you'd have a zero difference. So that's how we get going. And you just go through each of the steps. I think we give you the... the the starting code and then I would really recommend get in the habit of using the pound sign and identifying what the variables are and then what the data source is and then reuse the data source unless you've got a reason to change it but uh, I usually like to rename here again we're creating another data, data object that's what that that's called the concatenation but it's just I uh, create what I like to call it create using SAT GPA data, a new data object called Observe Difference Verbal Sex. And that makes sense to me. And then we calculate uh, SAT verbal as a function of sex. I think we already set that in there. And then we calculate the statistic stat. And here the one we want is the difference in means. Okay. And the order, since I started with female first, we want female first and then male. Of course, once you start with male, you could keep it all the way down. And this just, this last line just prints it out. So you can see I changed it again from observed difference GPA sex, that's the old one, to now observe difference verbal sex. So when we run this, first thing we see, we've got an answer here and it just says that my response variable was SAT verbal, numeric, explanatory, sex, which is a categorical, qualitative, or sometimes called a factor. And then in this one, we've got that difference there again, minus 0.6444. And that's what's stored over here in the observed difference verbal sex. You see it shows up in the environment. We've got one observation of one variable. If I click on that, we'll see over here we've got our statistic. So that's the basic process. Just go through, be patient, and uh, identify which variables you want to change. And here's the next code chunk, and it, the original is GPAs in null world. Now we're dealing with verbal, so I changed it to SAT verbal in null world. Still using the basic SAT GPA, 
still using uh, SAT verbal as a function of sex as opposed to GPAFY as a function of sex. We're doing the null is independence, leave that alone, and it's generate reps. We don't have to change anything there. And then down here, I'm just, again, printing this out a little bit, that the new uh, data object, uh, so I can see that and run it. It'll take a while to run, and then you can see over here, and, um, oops, close that. We've got this new one, SAT verbal in uh, null world. I can expand that so I can see the whole name. And you can see it's got, if you count those zeros, there's six of them, so it's one million observations, which means there's one million rows, and we've got three variables. And we can just see these three variables here. Sex verbal, uh, SAT verbal, excuse me, sex, and then we've got the replicates one through one million here. Uh, that's just numbering the rows. So this is how you go. This has been a long walk through, I apologize. Uh, I will uh, try to give you some more help, but you do this all the way through each of the uh, sections where we give you the code. Uh, again, I recommend putting the pound sign so that tells R this is no longer code, this is a comment. And then you can use that as a guide and change the data objects you want so that you can keep them different from the old one and then uh, make whatever other changes you want to use. Mainly, we're going to be changing the uh, GPA underscore FY for SAT verbal throughout all these things. So I hope this helps.